By the time NFL training camp gets here, Trevor Lawrence could be the highest paid quarterback in NFL history. We got all that and much more on today's episode of Locked on NFL. You are Locked on NFL, your daily NFL podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody, and welcome into another episode of Locked On NFL, bringing you all the biggest stories around the National Football League. And on this Tuesday, you've got Luke Braun at Luke Braun NFL on your favorite social media and myself, Ross Jackson, at Ross Jackson Nola. And on today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the our yike and our like, which we do every single week, something we liked from the week, something we didn't like from the week, including the lingering question, are the Giants 100-year anniversary jerseys good or horrible? We're going to go into all that. We're also going to dive into, uh, we're each going to pick two playoff teams from last year's playoffs that won't make the playoffs in 2024. We might have a couple of shockers for you in our selection <laughs> there. But to kick us all off, we're going to be taking a look at the Jacksonville Jaguars who have said that they are working on their contract extension for Trevor Lawrence, which could lead to Trevor Lawrence being the highest paid quarterback and therefore player in NFL history. Luke, when you look at the sort of relationship between the Jacksonville Jaguars and Trevor Lawrence, we know that this team hasn't yet won anything Thing, quote unquote, that's usually the question that's going to be asked about a quarterback extension, but that doesn't typically stand to reason about how contract extensions and highest paid contract extensions actually work. We've talked about this a few times on yeah, the show. Before. You're projecting. Yeah. How do you feel that this would potentially work out for Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars? I, it's one of those things where like, you're never going to look at a situation like this and have the Jaguars be like, eh, and let them walk. Like that's never going to happen. Right. Grow up. Right. Like, <laughs> Uh, that's a great Madden thing, but it's also like you're you're paying Trevor Lawrence for what you think he can do, not for what has happened in the past to the Jacksonville Jaguars, who has won the division once and had one playoff win in his rookie contract. Um, and the amount that you're going to pay him has a lot less to do with where you think he ranks in terms of quarterbacks and more to do with who was latest. This is the thing yeah. about markets. We talk about this all the time on Locked on NFL on Tuesdays that. Trevor Lawrence will probably be the highest paid guy. That does not mean that the Jacksonville Jaguars think he is the best quarterback in the league. That doesn't mean he th right. they think he's better than Patrick Mahomes or any insane take or whatever. Um, that's not really how it works. It's just that the cap is bigger than it was when those other guys signed. And there is a push to utilize that and say, I want to be able, you know, agents want to be able to say, I made my guy the highest paid guy. So it's going to happen. Uh, I don't really see a feasible world where the Jaguars don't get this done. It is a matter mm -hmm. of time to me. He'll make his 55 mil a year. And in two years, that won't feel like that much money. And that's kind of just the world that we're in now yep. forever. And, and he'll be the highest paid guy until the next guy gets paid. Yeah, and that that tends to be the way that this has continuously worked out. We've seen it over and over again. Right now, Joe Burrow is the highest paid quarterback in the NFL on a yearly basis in terms of average per year value of $55 million per year. And Luke, just a few days ago or just last week, um, you know, we were here on Locked in NFL talking about Jared Goff getting a contract mm -hmm. extension wherein he signed a four-year, $212 million contract extension that averages out to $53 million per year. That right there shows you Trevor Lawrence is not coming in under Jared Goff, It's but it's also very unlikely that he's going to settle for or that his team is going to allow them to settle for $54 million to nestle in between Joe Burrow and uh, Jared Goff. If you're at this point here in the offseason, it's 2024. You're about ready to see big time jumps in salary cap due to gambling money, TV deals. We just watched Netflix buy two games for $150 million and everything on Christmas Day. Um, they're going to pay him more than $55 million, more than likely. And I would certainly expect to see that be the case. Uh, and anything less than that would sort of be a disappointment, I would imagine, for Trevor Lawrence, for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and for his representation. And as you mentioned, any less than that, they're probably not getting a deal done, which does not seem viable at all. Right. And it's like what you don't want to do is nickel and dime your way out of your franchise quarterback, right? Like that. You right. Never, that and again, that, like that won't happen. That's fantasy. That's that's a uh, something that a Madden franchise player would do and then reset the save file. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but like you you're 
like what, what you're going to look like the actual average amount, honestly, you don't have to pay attention to it. Like it's not really a right. meaningful number anymore. The way that it's reported, look at the guarantees and the structure and all mm-hmm. that stuff. And, and really what I think the most important thing is, is the, the functional duration of the contract. That's how, what really tells you what the team thinks yeah. of it. Is this going to be right. a two year contract with an out? That's I think the way the Jared Goff one turned out is that it's, yeah it's mm-hmm. like, it's like two years and then they can get out of it if they want to I think that's the way the Saints one worked with that worked with Derek Carr last year mm-hmm. that one feels a little bit it's it's like provisional well let's give it two years and then if we want to get out of it we can get out of it our options are open versus you know the Patrick Mahomes extension there is no two year out in that one the Chiefs are not expecting to be asking any questions about Patrick Mahomes um, so looking at the 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 flexibility i guess how far do you get into this contract before it starts to be feasible to move on if things aren't going well mm-hmm. my guess is with trevor lawrence it's not going to be two year provisional no. uh, and i think that's the thing that really dictates the future you can put together the math puzzle of salary cap and nickel and dime 2 million here 3 million there figure you, that that's all well and good and putting that together, you know, of course, there's like value on it, but it's a drop mm-hmm. in the bucket compared to how much are they committing to Trevor Lawrence tells you really what they think about Trevor Lawrence. I I, I would say a, a team that pays 35 mil for four years and guarantees it all likes that quarterback more than a team that pays 50 mil for two years and then it's tradable. Yeah, it's a good point. It's a really good point. And then uh, I, I would also say looking at the Jared Goff contract structure, which still has $20 million of guarantees in the third year, it, it, which doesn't mean, which doesn't mean that you can't get out of that contract, right? There's ways, there's things to do that's you, know, you can just eat that dead cap. We just watched the, the Russell Wilson deal with the Denver Broncos and all those other things. But I would dare say that that structure shows you pretty much the floor for Trevor Lawrence. I would expect that Trevor Lawrence will see a ton of guaranteed base salary yeah. in his third year to make sure that that does become a contract where he very likely at least sees the off season of his fourth season before they make any other type of big uh, conversations or, or, or decisions around him. And also here's, mention here's this the too. question. Oh, no good. Yeah. Yeah. Here's yeah. the question is, is Trevor Lawrence still riding on his pre-draft reputation? This right. is the question that I think people are really getting spicy. I, I saw like a Dan Orlovsky take that's like he's going into year three. He should try to have a better year three and he might make more money if he like holds off on this, which actually is a decent argument. Right. Uh, but of course, it, you know, it, it gets misconstrued. But. With like this is the naysayer take is like mm-hmm. w- has Trevor Lawrence really played well enough to be this anointed one in Jacksonville? You're the guy for the rest of your career. And I do think the answer to that is yes. And it just requires a little bit of like critical thinking to get there uh, because his rookie year was the urban Meyer year and it was such a disaster everywhere around him. And he's had all kinds of other injury problems. Like he's been dealing with stuff and he's been overcoming those circumstances pretty well. It's just that that it's it, you know you're not going to get the like elite mind boggling production out of a team that's in the state that the Jaguars have been in, uh, mm-hmm. and it's just like very clear that it's not Trevor Lawrence's fault if you watch them at all. But that I think is is like the that that's the spicy question. Yeah, yeah. Two straight years of four thousand yards or more passing. Two straight years of twenty or more touchdowns. Did throw fourteen interceptions last year though, but also has had one good receiver really in his time to go around. Christian Kirk has had his moments, but really like Calvin Ridley was supposed to be the guy last year. They draft Brian Thomas Jr. This year out of LSU. They continue to rebuild their offense. I think this year is going to be the big year to figure all of it out. But if I'm Trevor Lawrence, I kind of want that contract right now. (laughs) That way I don't have to have any questions, no question marks asked, anything like that uh, moving forward. But we'll see the way that they get it all You're going to make plenty, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Like you're going to be fine, dude. You're going to be just fine. And the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to take care uh, of their guy. This is something Jacksonville has had a lot of trouble doing of bringing back guys that they've drafted, like homegrown talent. Tony Wiggins talks about this over at Lockdown Jaguars all the time. And it's good to see locking down Josh Allen earlier this offseason, uh, four years, 150. Now an opportunity to lock down Trevor Lawrence and continue to build around him. They're continuing to add talent there. I think the Jaguars are finally doing something that they showed an inability to do throughout the majority of their time. But it's great to see at least some of those things coming together here now. And those things will hopefully bring Jaguars fans a little bit more excitement uh, as they continue to sort of figure out what this franchise is going to look like in its future. 
Coming up next, we're going to take a look at two teams each that we think that that made the playoffs last year that we think won't make the playoffs in 2024. And I'm telling you, America's team, I'm not taking it lightly on you. We got that coming up for you as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on NFL, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on NFL is brought to you by Game Time's the best place to find last minute tickets to any kind of sporting event, whether you're looking to go to a conference championship game, basketball or hockey, or if you're looking to score tickets to perhaps your team's season opener. My team's op- a home opener is against the 49ers week two. Very exciting stuff there, or maybe do an international game. There's so many of those now. Make a trip out of it. I did that a couple years ago. Highly recommend. Very fun. If you can swing it and Game time will help you swing it because last minute deals help you save up to 60% off, especially if you're buying last minute for sports uh, or sports and beyond concerts, comedy, whatever. And game time is really upfront about their pricing. You can toggle uh, an option that is all in pricing. That means there's no hidden fees or anything. It shows you on the list what you will pay at checkout. Everything is upfront and you can see your seat view ahead of time. So Game time keeps you informed and is upfront and clear about everything. You know exactly what you're buying. And they're really honest with you. I really appreciate that in a ticket buying company. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on NFL for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N N F L for $20 off. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, everybody, continuing on with today's episode of Locked On NFL. We appreciate you very much making us your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget to go and check out the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 stream, the first national sports 24-7 stream available on YouTube. And that also allows you to kind of get away from some of those other networks. It's all about arguing and you know yelling and screaming, all of this stuff. You ain't got to worry about that over at Locked On Sports Today. It's all the biggest stories from the local experts that know the teams the best to cover them every single day without – all of the arguing. So go and check them out today over at Locked On Sports Today on YouTube. You also find that on the Amazon Fire TV channels app for free as well. So Luke, as we take a look here at teams that we th- that made the playoffs last year that we think mo- won't make the playoffs here in 2024, I'm going to kick us off with my spicy take. All right, I'm going to kick us off with okay. my spicy take. I had an easy okay. one and I had a spicy take. I've teased the hell out of it, so let me just go ahead and get to it. Um, it's the Dallas Cowboys. It's the Dallas Cowboys for me in the NFC. So I chose an NFC and an AFC. Um, I'm going Dallas Cowboys here. I just think that they have gone through so many disheartening, heartbreaking playoff appearances and subsequent losses that this is kind of the year to where everything kind of takes a bit of a step back. They've regressed. They've had to go back to uh, Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, The defense has been great when it's on. You know, Diggs has been one of the better corners in the NFL when he's on. Micah Parsons, one of the best players in the NFL. But is that going to be enough to overcome the drop-off on offense that I'm almost certain we're going to see from the Dallas Cowboys here in 2024? I have them as one of my teams not making the playoffs this year that did make the playoffs last year. Are we worried about them up front in the offense in the trenches? Is that the deal? Worried about the run game? A little worried bit about- of it too. Like a little bit concerned about them there. A little bit concerned about them with their run game or inability or or, or lack thereof. Uh, and I'm curious to see really like what Dak Prescott is going to be this year, right? Michael Gallup is gone. They kept CD Lamb. They've got some good stuff there, but man, there's just not really enough here that makes me feel like this team improved going into 2024 and they needed improvements from where they left off last year. They didn't have the nosedive that their NFC East partners, the Philadelphia Eagles did, which was another strong consideration for me on this list. But the Dallas Cowboys just feel like one of those inexplicable teams that should be in the playoffs this year that won't make it either because the rest of the division is really good or because there are things that effectively they get in their own way here in 2024. Yeah, there's always someone that has like a key injury or whatever, too. Yeah, yeah there's always a key injury. You, you can too. never really predict who that will be. But yeah. um, I see. So I'm, I'm going to take the easy answer. It's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's probably yeah. the one that most people are going to say. And that's because the Buccaneers basically went run it back. They snuck in as the fourth seed. They won a, a, a famously weak division. And yeah, they won a playoff game. Good for them. Uh, against that ailing Eagles team. And then they fell short when they hit the Lions. But mm-hmm. uh, I, it's not necessarily that I see them getting any worse. I think they're basically like kind of by design are the same team they were last year. But it's that the Falcons got a real quarterback. Yeah. I think the Kirk Cousins-led Falcons is going to be able to bring those weapons online. 
a little bit more than like Desmond Ritter or Taylor. Just Heineke, surprise, surprise. Like, <laughs> like they were dealing with some bad quarterbacking and going from bad to the kind of classic Kirk Cousins. That's a big improvement. So you're not, I don't think you're going to be able to get out of the NFC South at, you know, nine and eight or 10 and seven or whatever they ended up mm-hmm. at. Like, I think you're going to have to be a real good team. Uh, and plus those games against the Falcons will get that much harder. So yeah, yeah I, I see, I, I see a tough, like I, I see someone else winning the NFC South. Maybe that's just a, a way to put it. Cause I don't, I'm not counting out the saints either. I'm still kind of counting out the, Panthers, but maybe Bryce Young makes a year two leap. Like, you know, that happens with guys sometimes. So it's yeah. still something to keep an eye on. But I just I don't see the Bucks repeating a fourth time. Yeah, I think the Falcons will be the odds on favorite when it comes to the NFC South. I think everybody's going to look at them as the most improved team on page or on paper. Kyle Pitts, the star tight end, called himself a super rookie, uh, learning a new system <laughs> here in his what third season or something like that. Oh, man. Think so. That's <laughs> certainly a great way to treat your uh, number. What is it? Number eight overall pick. Or number four yeah, overall right. pick. Number eight. Number was eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was. It was an insane. Um, uh, it's just kind of been an insane off season for them. And then even the like the Michael Penix thing. It, you know, imagine adding another defensive piece or another offensive piece at that position. That's instead. the thing that sinks. You know, the thing that like is, it could have been defense. better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, but I mean, the defense in this in the NFC South division, like. Uh, playing the easiest schedule in the NFL, whatever that means, right? Like strength of schedule is like the one of the largest crocs of 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 Huey outside of what <laughs> I'm going to talk about in the next segment um, in you know the NFL uh, as a whole. Uh, so yeah, so I put them there. One of the other things that I'll mention about the Dallas Cowboys is is drafting Tyler Guyton in this round. I did or drafting Tyler Guyton with their first pick was I think a really really good selection i like tyler guyton a lot so i'm curious to see exactly how it all works out but i do think with dallas i'm just concerned about them maintaining where they have been um i'll go with the easy rc i'm going to go the cleveland browns i'm going to predict two things for the cleveland browns um the cleveland browns won't make the playoffs in 2024 and by oh how deep in the season should i go luke let's say week six by week six Cleveland Browns fans will be asking for Jameis Winston to start over Deshaun Watson. Those are my two. Wow. So you the, think he's just like cook cooked? Because I think he's cooked. He was. I think he's done. Yeah. Because he he's. I mean he's he's like dealt with injuries. Even in in Houston, he dealt with injuries. Mm-hmm. But I guess I, yeah. I mean a year off takes a lot out of a guy. Takes a lot, like, dude. Like, like that's like, especially at that position. That. Yeah, every time we like, see that, on. it's just they're never the same. Like, it's one thing to get injured and you're still in the building, but like being like away from everything for a year yep. really, really takes a lot out of a guy. Yeah. Uh, I there's just some part of me that still thinks that we're gonna see the the Deshaun Watson that we saw in Houston come onto the field, and it's gonna be gross and suck, and everybody's gonna hate it. But like, <laughs> if there's just this part of me that's like that guy still wants to like that guy still exists. Right. Uh, and it, like all of those talents are still there somewhere. And it's just a matter of getting the distinct cloud off of him, which probably never will come. So maybe yeah. you're right. Um, yeah. Man, the AFC is just full of interesting <laughs> ideas for this, right? Like, of course, there's Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh feels like a pretty easy one. So maybe I could just mm-hmm. go with Pittsburgh again. But I feel compelled to do something spicier just for the sake of it. And so like the, the Russell Wilson factor helps Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah, the, the way that the, there's a lot work. of people that say like Justin Fields will be starting week eight. I don't think so. Yeah, that's hey, re- you can make the same prediction about Pittsburgh that I made about Cleveland. Yeah, well, people might be calling for him, but I, I don't think Mike Tomlin <laughs> rolls that way. No, uh, I don't think so either. And and you know, Mike Tomlin, I I just I I know better than to bet against him finding a way to like nine wins and a and being yeah, in the sure. heart in, in sure. you know early January. I'm gonna be spicy. Sorry, Buffalo, your time has come. You're old. Oh, Buffalo with with a rookie instead of Diggs. Josh Allen will be right. forced to play the heroist of hero balls. You're going to live and die on Josh Allen. You're going to have games where Josh Allen wills a terrible team to victory. It's going to be like like early Trevor Lawrence stuff where you're just going to have these games like, oh, my God, it's Josh Allen. And then you're going to have these games where like, oh, my God, Josh Allen. <laughs> uh, because he's going to be forced to like press so much. And when Josh Allen presses, that's when the best and worst things happen. So I, mm. I can see just enough really dumb losses. And when you do have Josh Allen on, how many of those games do you have the team around him capable of winning? Or does he have to do every yeah. single thing on his own? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Buffalo. Sorry. It's a big one. Uh, who do you have winning? The, who is Miami winning the AFC East? 
Uh, yeah, I guess it'd be Miami. Biracial Could King be a, Mike McDaniel. <laughs> yeah, there it is. He'll they'll finally get it. <laughs> um, I don't see it with the Jets. Like it, it, it it's interesting because both the Jets and Patriots could like you can see that world but a uh-huh. 41 year old Aaron Rodgers who who just spent a year off I'm not sure I see the vision there as good as yeah. the Jets are around him um and then I mean there's always that weird world where like Drake May is just like the truth and and explodes right, right out the gate but I don't think the Patriots are built to take advantage of that anyways so they're probably just still yet. fourth yeah for sure still All in right, rebuilding so team- mode and that's okay yeah one team out of the AFC East I mess with it and at the Miami Dolphins I mess with that too. I'm right there with you, my friend. All right, coming up next, we're going to take a look at our yike and our like, including answering one of the biggest questions of the week. Uh, are the uh, New York Giants 100-year anniversary uh, jerseys good or absolutely terrible? We're going to discuss that as we continue on and wrap up today's episode of Locked in NFL, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on NFL is brought to you by FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. And right now you can find all kinds of great stuff. Of course, you can go bet on something like uh, Wolves Mavs. You can go bet on them, uh, whether it's individual games or the whole series or three point props or whatever you want, as well as the same thing over in the hockey bracket. Uh, You can also get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet if you go sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's $150 that you can bet on any of those things or even some NFL futures. Who's going to win each division? That kind of stuff. You think I'm an idiot about Atlanta? Go to FanDuel. Put your money where your mouth is. At FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Once again, that is FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every playoff shot count. All right, everybody, continuing on and wrapping up today's episode of Locked on NFL. Again, we appreciate you very much for being an everyday or here on the show. Make sure you also go and check out your favorite Locked on podcast for your favorite team. Just search Locked on Vikings, Locked on Saints, Locked on Pacers, as we were mentioning earlier. Uh, So much more. So make sure you go and check all of that out here on the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day, every week here on the show. Luke and I like to do our yike and our like, something we did like from the week, something we didn't like from the week. And Luke, I know that you have been having a very happy time away, but I I, I feel like I might be able to drag you into some negativity here uh, to get a yike out. Uh, so to start, I'm going to give I'm going to give my my like, actually, okay. because I think I'm in the minority on this. Uh, but I'm, I'm curious to see what you think. My like. Are the New York Giants 100 year anniversary jerseys? I absolutely love them. I think they're great. Everyone hates them. I love them. What say you, Luke? You're right. Everybody else is uh, is right. super wrong and doesn't understand graphic design. Uh, Dang right. <laughs> they're good. They're, sorry, everybody. They aren't what you expect, and that's why you don't like them. They are uh, aiming at a nostalgia that you were not alive for, and that's why you don't like them. They're actually pretty. I, I I think people don't really aren't really used to like horizontal anything in a football right. uniform. Usually, those are the ones that get a lot of the hate. Like I I always remember the Bills with like the shoulder caps, and I didn't like yep. those for for other reasons. But like you don't see a lot of horizontal in a football uniform. And I think that that is stupid. Uh, I think it's okay to have a little bit of extra, um, a little bit of stripage in the outside of the side of your pant leg. Like it's okay to break the formula (laughs) a little bit and be a little like all of the, the uniforms were like the Texans uniforms are so blase. They like, Ooh, it's like a bit of a stylized shoulder stripe. Like, come on, like get a little (laughs) bit spicy and they'll wear them once, twice a year. year. Like you're not going to look at these all the time. I think the the contrast on them is good. I think they're really interesting. And yeah, they harken back to a, to an an, an old, you know, legacy time that giant, Mm -hmm. the giants organization has a lot of respect for. Yeah, I'm all about them. I love them. I love the helmets, which are uh, reminiscent of like the, the leather cap uh you know situation with the stripes going back and everything like that like i absolutely love that that's that's the thing that i think maybe i look at it from the perspective of like oh this is really cool this is especially cool for someone that's been a giants fan for a really really long time like this is awesome like i imagine the feeling of that person watching this game that has some knowledge of those jerseys or whatever and that could be you know somebody that was born 20 years after those jerseys were worn whatever like but just still has some knowledge of those jerseys like 
really, really cool stuff. So I, I really enjoy it. I really like it. I'm excited to see it. I hope that they win every game that they play those in, um, as long as they don't wear them against the the Saints in New York, you know, towards the end of the season. I, I really am excited about these jerseys and, and I dig them. The one thing that I will say just to be like fair is that the pant color throws me off the kind of like slightly sandy khaki. colored pants. Yeah. The khaki pants. Uh, I like the, it. I think it makes that, the other colors pop. That's the part that kind of throws me off a little bit, but I, I far from hate it. You know what I mean? Like I don't dislike it because of that. I'm just used to seeing the red, white, and blue of the yeah. giants, but I'm not mad at the khaki. I wear khakis all the time. I'm a khaki guy. I've never been personally a khaki guy, but okay. I, that's my own fashion. That's, that's, yeah. I think they're fine. I'm not a cargo pants guy, me. but I am a khaki guy. <laughs> Fair enough. Get a little formal. <laughs> uh, okay. So my, both my like and my yike have, uh, something to do with one another. My like goes to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, what a run they are on best season they've had maybe ever, arguably at least in 20 years. The, the only other season that holds a candle to it is that Oh three Oh four season, mm-hmm. uh, that I was a kid and like went to a bunch of those games. Nice. So I, my relationship to basketball is completely deteriorated. It's not really a sport that I follow anymore, but I'm happy for everybody who, you know, the diehard Timberwolves fans that have been there through a lot of hard times. And, what a crazy accomplishment to drop three games in a row in a seven game series and yeah, and then fall behind by 20 points in game seven and still like have the fortitude to, to make that comeback. Those comebacks, not only do they require the ability to like get hot and go on a big run and get streaky in any sport, but it takes Mm -hmm. a certain like mental resilience to not quit on that game. Even in the professional level, you fall behind that far Plenty of teams will pack it in and say, all right, good season. And then there's some in, in, intense people that say, no, 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 we're not done. T- yeah. Not till it hits triple zeros. Yep. Um, but it, it also goes to serve my yike, which is really highlighted in a seven game sports like playoff series. Mm-hmm. Cold take culture is so bad. There is mm-hmm. one account online that's allowed to do cold take. It's freezing cold takes. They're the only one that does it right. That's it. Because yep. they just retweet it. They just will just say, like, here, look at this. This is it. They'll just post a screenshot of the take with no additional commentary. And you can see how old it is and and laugh and say, haha, somebody was really wrong. Everybody else is terrible at it. They're way too overconfident. And what you get in a seven game series is you'll get like the like, OK, so the Wolves win two games and everybody starts taking their victory laps about how somebody was wrong about the Wolves back in March. And somebody said something negative, you know, in a game and uh, in, in a summer league game last year and Mm -hmm. like you're bringing up that old take and it's like for one like get a job like what are you doing (laughs) but (laughs) but for two you're gonna like dunk on that as though the series is over and then when the nuggets win three games in a row now everybody's dunking on those and then the wolves win game seven and everybody's dunking on the dunk that was the dunk on the dunk like Everyone, job, please. Every, outside, grass. Now, this is awful. This is horrible discourse. It's everybody imagining that they're smarter than the other person because they just are later in time than that person because they know something yeah. that that other person didn't know because that person is in the past. You're not smart. You're just a little older. <laughs> I love everybody outside, grass. Now, that's like, God, please, that's God. great. <laughs> that's awesome. Yes. I would have to agree with that. I, I do think that the NBA's playoff structure is better than the NFL's because you get the seven game series. But oh, I am so great. I, I super disagree. With... This is it's why I can't get oh, into really? basketball. Oh, I can only I love I, can, I enjoy series. I enjoy the tournament, the March Madness, because every game's yeah. an elimination game. And that is oh, yeah. way less fair. It is not as good at determining who the best uh, team is. You will get unfair results and upsets and crazy stuff. That's yeah, why yeah. it's good. That's what's good about it. Yeah, I don't it's about want who is better in that game. I don't need the best machine for determining the best team. I want an entertaining thing. I want weird upsets. I want good Eli point. Manning, David Tyree helmet catches. Yeah, good point. Good point. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Let us know who's got the best. Who's got the best playoff? Yeah, who's structure? got the better playoff? I want to know. I want to know who's got the best playoff structure. I also like hockey, but I mean, it's basically basketball. Like it's, playoff it's hockey is like, insane. Yeah, yeah that, but playoff that, hockey that as a whole, just like in and of itself, playoff hockey is incredible, and it's the only time I'll ever watch hockey. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, I'll wrap this up with my yike here. My yike is OTAs, and it's not that OTAs exist, organized team activities. It's the gap between rookie mini camps and mandatory mini camps. It's that we call them organized team activities instead of calling them what they actually are, which is just voluntary mini camps. 
why do we have this? Why do I have to write every every piece for the next three weeks that I write? I'm going to have to write organized team activities and in parentheses put OTAs and then be able to refer to it as OTAs for the rest of the piece. I just want to call it voluntary mini camp, damn it. And it just be done with like, I, I am so, I hate this. This is the one, one of the things that I hate about the NFL. Like I was mentioning earlier, this was the other thing that I really hate about the NFL is that we call it organized team activities instead of just calling it what it really is, which is voluntary mini camps. And honestly, voluntary mini camps would help so much with the fact that not every player on every team participates in them. If we would just call it what it True. is, voluntary mini camps, it would help to clear up all of that ridiculous speculation uh, so much, but it would hurt the aggregators quite a bit. I do know that. Which is good. Yes, yeah, which I'm okay with. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Uh, Ross, that's the oldest opinion you've ever had. I, that, that is, is really that some is, like boomer, yeah. like long time, yeah. decades long beat writer kind of stuff. That's sick of doing the parentheses organized team. Activity. I I saw that I saw the Giants 100 year anniversary jerseys, and I just felt spoken to and touched in a way that I haven't experienced <laughs> before. And so here I am to hate on things at the ripe old age of 119. The ripe old age. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. I immediately aged uh, because of my appreciation. Yeah. For a good set of jerseys in good nostalgia. Today's culture is all about nostalgia anyway, so let's just enjoy some nostalgia. People don't know this, but Ross actually fought in World War II. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I uh I fought and ran. Uh those are <laughs> those are my two, those are my two primary That's why he's here. That's how he Yes. That's how, I, that's how I got to this point. So uh, awesome. Well, uh, assuming I make it, we'll see you next week. Uh, <laughs> and we appreciate you very much for joining us for another you episode of Blood Boys. It's fine. Yeah, it'll be all right. Uh, appreciate you very much for joining us for another episode here of Locked on NFL tomorrow. James and uh, James and Chris will be here to get you all ready with all the biggest questions from around the NFL. You get a special guest on Wednesday, on Thursday's episode because it won't be Alex and Tyler, but it will be Alex Clancy and the genius herself, Michelle Majuk, will be oh. on that show co-hosting. So that's going to be a ton of fun. Make sure you tune in for that as well. And of course, Luke and I will be back here with you next week. We appreciate you very much for Luke Braun at Luke Braun NFL on your favorite social media. I am Ross Jackson at Ross Jackson Nola, and we will see you here soon on another episode of Locked on NFL, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.